Hello my friends, welcome again to my video channel. Today we will start with part 2 of the A100X stereo amplifier. There's a lot to be done, so let's start. A new switch is necessary as we have seen, it is broken. It's a standard switch, it's luckily not installed on the board. So we only need two screws. This is made by SIC Alps. I ordered a similar or nearly identical shadow switch which is available on the market as new old stock. Well, that's to be done. So we have now a topic. The fuse is blown. It was not the electrolytic caps. Next suspects are of course the output transistors. And I don't know which types are. The soldering is exactly on the type uh, description. First check is the transistors with a uh, simple continuity measurement, whether the collector emitter has a short or not. This is the most common fault for such transistors. Common emitter is shorter than if a common emitter short is there, then we would have of course a short on the primary side also, because this would be a real short over the caps and would blow the fuse. The resistors are marked collector, emitter, base. And we will check now the opla. in ohm measurement, not diode, ohm measurement between collector and emitter. The range of 10 it's kilo ohm. Show it again. When you do it reverse, 9 kilo ohm. Okay. Here between collector and emitter, this was the NPN transistor, that's the PNP. It's in, in circuit test, 9 kilo ohm, and when I reverse it, also 9 kilo ohm, 10 kilo ohm. The other channel. Collector, emitter, oops, uh -huh, 1.7 ohms. When I reverse the polarity, one point seven ohm between base and emitter. Mm -hmm. Reverse polarity. I could use the diode test for this purpose. I will do it later. This transistor has obviously a short. And then let's go to this one. Collector emitter. Uh huh. Reverse polarity. Well, obviously one side here in one channel. The transistors are bad. I will take them out and measure them separately. The heat sink is removed. This thermal switch here, which is in line with the power line switch, on the primary side was only screwed at one screw to the heat sink. The second screw is missing. Makes no sense, such a mount. Here we have a ground connection. It's also not a good solution. The enable, the enable should be removed because it's black and this is hmm, isolating or not, but it's not a good ground connection. Well, the bad transistors are these two ones. We can check them again when they are out. And here we have the collector and this is the emitter. And we see here zero dot something ohms. This is ohm, so you can see it. I repeat it, this is ohm. And reverse polarity. Mm 
the other one it's the emitter is here with the collector same topic just for reference the healthy one with this one we have here infinite yes yeah, that's okay the base is not controlled okay maybe it's interrupted and it's also dead <laughs> the other way uh, we'll see if this is collector and emitter the other one is also nearly fully isolating yes now we can check the the voltages this is base to collector ah okay sorry base it's an NPN transistor ah, looks good and this is base to emitter oops hmm, base to emitter nothing I'm not doing wrong Uh -huh, interesting let's check this one that's okay base to emitter and base to collector oh sorry base this is base this is collector and this is base to emitter better make it wrong here this is base sorry this is a base base to collector but base to emitter is dead of this transistor uh -huh, uh -huh. Shorted, shorted, seems to be okay. Interruption with the base emitter connection. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All four transistors have to go. And I see there are different types on it. Don't know what happened to the history, but it's obviously a bad history. Now, a simple test with my transistor checker. This is obviously okay, this transistor. Okay. gain is 147 that's okay This is a transistor where we have only measured base emitter. Ah, sorry, base collector. Base emitter was dead on this transistor. Correct, not this is base collector. Two and three. Two is black. Okay. And three is yellow. That's the base connection. That's right. And the other ones are more or less shorted. So we can just connect them to the low resistance what we have measured. One point six ohms, that's what we measured and between base and collector would be eighty three ohms. Or if it's two and three, sorry. Black is collector. Yes, collector. Three is yellow, that's emitter, yes. That's what we have measured. And the other one is, is identical. This 
the sequence of the wires is not important. Ah, okay, here we have diodes. It's also okay, diodes. Three is yellow. And this is the base connection. This base. Uh -huh. Well, again, it's not a transistor. So I think three are bad and the fourth one also has to go. I cannot identify the type and I want to have identical types in both channels. So more or less all four transistors are bad. And this is the reason for the blown fuse because the because two transistors on one side are more or less shorted and this causes of course a short on the on the power supply rail and then this causes the fuse on the primary to blow. The question is now where are these two transistors shorted? There is no current limitation in this path. Could be a problem in the driver stages here that one of these driver transistors are dead that means also shorted. Or here we have a problem with the differential amplifier or not or but and this and this and this. Could be an idea to swap all these transistors or at least to check them very thoroughly. But um, I have seen on many other uh, channels by clever guys, they said simple transistor checking go non go does not say that they are operating uh, okay in the circuit. Could be an idea to swap all these transistors. But first, of course, I will check whether one is faulty. Another topic could be the electrolytic caps. A shorted electrolytic cap could also cause a permanent current by deleting the BIOS setting. By the way, there is no BIOS setting, there is no trim pot to set the BIOS and the offset. It's a differential amplifier and it is assumed that this voltage here is nearly zero. And this is zero, this is zero, and this differential amplifier controls this one, and this differential amplifier controls this one. But there is no setting. And this base voltage is assumed to be zero, like this. And when this is zero, then we have a symmetrical output. I hope... I hope that this is not another problem with the circuit. Looks strange, but... We have to check all these transistors. They are standard transistors, BC560 or so, and BD135136. Complementary types. <coughs> not, not difficult to get them, I think. Maybe I have someone on stock here. Well, but first I have to look for new power transistors. Before we swap the final transistors, these two, there are three other uh, modifications necessary. First, these two Sina diodes here get rather hot. The uh, board is burned, so I will replace them by bigger ones with higher dimension. Second, these two resistors, 0 dot. 22 ohms, 220 milliohms are also brown. I replace them also by, by new ones. In the third modification, or well, these are only repairs and modification of this resistor here and here. This is a, a modified circuit with 5.6 mega ohm. Original dimension is, as I know, 1 mega ohm. This resistor determines the bias current here through this path. The voltage drop across this resistor is fed to this transistor. This transistor here is grounded, zero, so whatever it, it, it it's necessary to have here also zero volt, it's uh, determined by this path here. And when we have here one mega ohm to minus 12 volt, then we need a current to overcome this uh, loss of, of current to feed the transistor. So when we have here one mega ohm, we need a certain uh, voltage drop here to uh, control this resistor in the same way as this. And when the this resistor gets higher, then we need less current to be compensated flowing 
into the minus 12 volt so the voltage across this resistor drops and this causes less bias current. It is proposed in the forums 5.6 mega ohm. As I saw on the board there is already a modification but only 4.7 mega ohm. I will choose this 5.6 mega ohm. Maybe the guy who did this had no 5.6 mega ohm resistor at hand. I will do this also. Replace the two Sina diodes by stronger ones, replace these resistors and these resistors by 5.6 mega ohm. For the new power transistor, I've chosen the uh, Type 2N3055, which was in according to some schematics I have found. And the PMP, the complementary type, I chose the 2N6029. I selected it for the same gain, uh, gain 38. The other also have 38. Um, yes, I know the 6029 is not the correct um, complementary type. Voltage, current and so on is no problem. Only the transit frequency is a little bit lower. The original 3059 has, as I know, 2 or 3 MHz. And this one has only 1 MHz or so, but it's not relevant in this application. Important is the power of the current and the gain. So I've chosen these types and I will install them now onto the heatsink. Before we continue our work, I will show you uh, how shall I say? I call it a top notch of nonsense. I've never seen such a solution. There's a heatsink. We have here the power transistors. The new power transistors are installed. Here we have the fan on this side and the hot air is squeezed out in this direction. That's the airflow. It comes out this direction. And here in the output where the hot air comes out. There's an electrolytic capacitor installed. Inside a heatsink, which gets very hot due to the class A operation, this guy, this genius, has installed an electrolytic capacitor. Top notch of nonsense. Up to now in my life, maybe I will see other things. I'm always open for new experiences, but this is okay. I said what I think. This has to go. By the way, I will swap, of course, all electrolytic caps on this board. This makes no sense to, to discuss whether they are good or not. The main caps, meanwhile, the new ones arrived. And the other ones, I will also swap them. So we have then a new uh, um, board with new electrolytics. So let's now start with the change of the electrolytics. This cap is out. Now let's check it. What do you think? Any bets are welcome. Well, measured at 120 Hz, we have 255. Dissipation 1.45. It should have 1000 microfarad. 1000. Quality is also below any reasonable levels of this is simply overheated it's 25 25 percent of its nominal capacity at 120 hertz when i go up to one kilohertz uh, 11 microfarad and the quality drops dot one five or so this is impossible just to have a comparison i have here 1000 microfarad it's a new one, 105 degrees Celsius at one kilohertz. We have 673 microfarad. And at 120 hertz, we nearly have 1000 uh, microfarad. It's 0.99 millifarad. Quality is 10. That's a good one. And the old one, I fear that the other electrolytics aren't better. I decided to place this capacitor here outside the heatsink, drilled two holes in it, and will you can see it? Okay, yes. Here it is. And then I can solder them on the rear side. 
I hope it's a little bit better there, not so hot. And of course the new electrolytic cap is a 105 degrees Celsius type. All electrolytic caps in the phono stage are replaced. These ones, this is shifted from here to here as we have seen. New ones, new ones. This is the uh, voltage stabilizer plus and minus 12 volt for the phono stage. It's a separate uh, a circuit with a TL084CN the double or quadruple uh, op amp. These electrolytics are all replaced by new ones with 105 degrees Celsius. And now we will do a short check whether this whether this part is okay and feed in 24 volt. This unit has with this transformer a little bit more than uh, 24 volt, but that's not, not relevant for the first test. We can do it with 24 volt plus minus as a, su uh, as a supply coming from the capacitors here. And now some, some first voltage checks. First we check. I feed in a 25 to 30 volt plus minus and this is ground. So the uh, basic functions should be there the power transistors are not connected. First is check of the Sina diodes we replaced minus 12 and here we have plus 12. This is the other one also plus 12 and minus 12. That's okay. Now we check the power supply on the board, the regulated power supply for the preamplifier. This is should be 12 volt minus 11.5 and plus 11.5. This works also, so we are on a good track and can now continue with the work. Now we'll start the first test. Yes, it looks like an overkill, but I like it. The electrolytics are all swapped. These are also new. Contacts, when necessary, are resoldered. Only the fans are not connected up to now. What do we have here? Two meters which control or measure the supply voltage. Should be in the range plus minus 35 volt. Set to 100 volt full scale. Here we have two voltmeters which measure the current through the final stage. It's the voltage drop across the uh, collector resistors. Other amplifiers have emitter resistors. These, this amplifier has collector resistors as we have seen uh, 0.22 ohms two times. So we have dot four four ohms and the voltage drop is measured with these two uh, meters in the one volt range. Full scale is one volt over the resistor, left channel, right channel. And here we measure the DC output, the offset of the output left channel, right channel. These are analog meters with mechanically centered scale and the scale is plus and minus. So I have here one volt plus minus one volt. And this is a dummy load, two times uh, 100 ohm, four watt, 100 watt, four ohm, isolated from each other. They're connected to the output here. Well, I will switch on the uh, Amplifier and then slowly increase the line voltage from 0 volt to up to 230 volt to see whether we have symmetrical conditions, whether we have any problems, overheating. So let's start. We switch on zero input, the variac is set to zero. And then I slowly increase the line voltage. I go down to uh, 30 volt sensitivity, full scale. We see a little bit more in the low voltage ranges. 50 volt. No current flowing, no offset. Go up to 100 volt. Here we have a current on the left channel, bias current. On the right channel we have no. I will discuss it later why there is a an unsymmetry in the power supply. But when I increase the line voltage further, we are at, what is it? We have here 100 volt, 110, 20, 
You see now we also have a bias current in the right channel. No offset, we have here a little bit more than 15 volt. Go up to 150 line voltage. 200. Uh, full scale now, sorry, full scale is 100 volt. I go to 220. 30 so we have a supply voltage of 33 volt the old electrolytics had 35 volt nominal these ones the new ones have 40 volt that's necessary now let's have a look at the oh it gets a little bit warm uh, no offset in this range go down to 100 millivolt 30 millivolt Full scale now is 30 millivolt plus minus. We have here 20 millivolt. The voltage drop across the resistors is 2.1 volt full scale to 2.8. 0 0.28 and the fifth side, same. 1 volt. Ohm's law. Current is voltage divided by R. The voltage is two hundred eighty. Yes. Okay. Dot two eight divided dot four four equals six six hundred thirty six milliamps this one has the same value as identical 640 milliamps we have bias current and the offset voltage is in the range of 18 millivolt we have seen there's an unbalance in the right channel now to the reason why it is the reason is the power supply of the 12 volt rail the right channel supplies not only the Rod amplifiers for power stage, it also supplies the preamp for the left and for the right channel. This preamp has a common power supply for left and for right channel, and this common power supply is derived from the right channel. The reason is, or that's the reason why we have a series resistor of 470 ohms for these Sina diodes in the right channel, because there's an additional load. The right channel has here 680 ohms. I think you can't see it. I tell it. R14 and R R13. And here we have R114 and 113, which is 470 ohm in the right channel for the additional supply of the preamp, which is connected to the pot here. This one. And the left channel doesn't have this. So the right channel is a little bit asymmetrically loaded compared to the left channel. That's not a good design. That is maybe the reason why we have a delayed um, rising bias current. Doesn't matter when we have full power supply, then both channels are identical as we have seen. And the little offset here of 20 or 18 millivolt is maybe also caused by this uh, effect or not. I'm not sure. I think more or less not because the 12 volt is okay. I measured it. I think it's simply a, a, a tolerance. We have here an offset voltage of uh, 20 millivolt. Let's take 20 millivolt, it's easier. In a 4 ohm system, okay, we have not a DC resistance of 4 ohm. A speaker has less than 4 ohm DC resistance. Let's calculate with 1 ohm. 20 millivolt, 1 ohm is 20 milliamps, and this is totally. 400 uh, microwatts, half a milliwatt, not more. I think that's not a power dissipation. We have to discuss about it. So I think it's it's okay and we can leave it. It makes no sense to squeeze out the last uh, millivolt of balance. Th there is no pot for setting the balance. That's, uh, that's a consequence of the rather weird circuit. We have seen, we have per channel two complete differential stages. Each transistor here is separately controlled. 
so we cannot generate a common offset voltage for both channels to compensate for it. So I have to leave it. It's okay, no problem, but I cannot change it. Next test now will be to have an output to see what happens when we feed in a signal on the cinch connectors on the rear side from CD tuner and so and phono input and then use the scope to see what's going on in the amplifier. And now we are at the end of part two with this amplifier. In part three we will check the output, make some power and distortion measurements. I made the first test uh, and I found that the pot here makes some trouble and the volume setting is a very interesting uh, circuit. It is not a standard circuit for a pot which is grounded on one side and the wiper uh, takes off a certain uh, part of the input. It is a different circuit. Maybe this makes trouble also. Still challenging this amplifier. Stay healthy, stay tuned. See you on this channel.